Once we were in the world, now we are not. We are no longer living in our flesh. So the cussing, the fighting, the gossiping, the slandering, all the evil things that we once did, we are no longer doing that anymore. There is transformation when you encounter Christ. We look at Paul on the road to Damascus. He was killing Christians. He thought he was doing the right thing until he encountered Jesus and he was changed forever. Many people just haven't had that encounter yet. That's why we pray for our enemies. That's why we don't give up hope. So if you are in a family of unbelievers, be the light, be the light. How will they ever know God if you're not showing them the love of God? And I know it's hard. Some people are very, very difficult to get along with. Some people, it just seems impossible. Some environments are so toxic. But even in those toxic environments, unless God is telling you to leave, he has you there for a reason. There's something inside of you that that workplace needs. There's something inside of you that your grandmother or your mother or father or sisters, brothers, cousins, auntie, uncles, whoever is an unbeliever, God has placed you in their life for a reason. But if you run, you, you flee, you try to escape it, and God didn't tell you to go, that maybe may have been the only chance they had of really truly knowing Christ through you. So it goes on to say that we're we're persecuted. We go through hardships. We go through a lot as Christians, and this is true. But it goes on to say that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We overcome. No matter what we go through, we make it to the other side. We make it to the to the to the winning side. It may look like to everybody else, our life is falling apart. It may look like all hope is lost. There's no way they're getting out of this one. Where's their God now? But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter what you go through, God is going to make a way. How do I know this? Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Who met them in the fire? Exactly. They were not alone. They were not alone and neither are you. Let's look at Esther. When the enemy Haman came up against Esther and her people, Esther went into a fast. Who delivered? God. Let's look at David. He has so many enemies. Read Psalms. We know that all he talked about throughout Psalms was his enemies because <laughs> he had so many enemies. He was always singing to God. He had a heart for God. There's so many people in the Bible, the ones that came before us who struggled, who suffered, they went through, but they endured to the end. They, they made it to the finish line. They didn't give up. And for many of us, we want to give up. Life gets hard. Looking at your bank statement, <laughs> eviction notice on the door, the report from the doctor, your children are acting up. I mean, it's, it's always something. Maybe you're having marital problems. I'm here to tell you, God can work it out, but sometimes he'll let it fall apart. He'll let your spouse leave. He'll allow your children to, to continue to do what they're doing because you need your peace. You keep praying for your children. You keep fasting and standing for your marriage. You, you keep going and doing your part and God sees it. But there's also going to come a time where he tells you to rest. You can't do it all. Our bodies are not equipped to just keep taking on so much stress and so much pain and so much suffering. At some point, God is going to give you rest and relief. But in that, in that pruning, in that warfare, when you're fighting, it's strengthening you. It's making you stronger. You're becoming that soldier for Christ that God is looking for. Because I'm telling you, it's darker out there in this world than in your household. It's darker out there in the world than in the workplace. But if you're running from those situations, how can you endure the darker parts that are coming? You understand me? So if we can endure this, then we can endure anything. But you can't give up and you can't lose hope. God is looking for mighty warriors that are ready to stand up. If he's waking you up at three o'clock, go into prayer. If he's waking you up at the midnight hour, don't go back to sleep. Get up. We got to get on our post. This is this is serious. If your family is on drugs, any family members, it's not for you to gossip. They're struggling. They're battling demons and they need prayer. Now is not the time to be making fun of anyone. 
we need to be in prayer for everyone. Our children are lost, they're confused. I mean, it's getting bad when now you can marry a, a tree. I mean, come on. Now you can marry a robot. It, it's it's getting bad out here. And we gotta we gotta go into prayer and ask God, what am I called to do? Where, where, where am I supposed to go? Find out what your gifts and talents are because we need more people on the front lines. There are people out here suffering. They're unaliving themselves because they, they don't believe that there's any hope. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And many of them don't know Jesus. But if you're running every time something gets rough, how are you gonna survive when it really gets crazy out here? Because we can see it's already happening. So that's my first live uh, Bible teaching, uh, Romans 8. Um, I look forward to seeing your comments. Um, if you want to reach me, my email is in the about section of my uh, YouTube channel. I'm all about spreading love. I'm all about encouraging and motivating the body of Christ and just helping people to see you're here for a purpose. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. You're special. You're unique. You're awesome. Even if everybody else around you is telling you you're not, you really are because you're uniquely made. All of our fingerprints are different. So that shows already you're special to God. He took the time to make every single fingerprint unique. He knows the very numbers of hairs on your head. I'm telling you, you're beautiful. Anything God made, God has created is beautiful and wonderful, and magnificent. I don't care what anybody tells you. You start looking in that mirror and start loving what you see. Even if you have goals for weight loss, or even if you have goals to, um, I don't know, any goal. <laughs> Stick with it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. I'm here to tell you you can. So be encouraged. Let's walk this out together and let's fellowship. So many of us are separated. We're all over the world scattered. We need to come together and be there for one another. So come out of hiding. Let's reach out and let's get to know each other because that's what the body of Christ is all about. Where two or more are in agreement and the prayer, God is in the midst. So we need to come together. And it's all about love, y'all. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to make fun of nobody. Even LGBTQ plus community, they deserve love too. Jesus died for them. So I'm not here to tell anyone they're going to hell. I'm not here to bash anyone. That's not what my platform is about. It's all for the glory of God and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So let us continue to love and stop the hatred because the way we judge, we're going to be judged in that same way. So God bless you. And I pray that you continue to keep going. Bye-bye until next time.